Hello, in this video we're going to look at the income and substitution effect of a price decrease and we're going to be using the following utility function. Things that we'll learn in this video, how to maximize utility using a utility maximizing condition, how to derive ordinary or Marshallian demands, how to find the utility maximizing consumption bundle, how to derive compensated or Hicksian demands, how to solve for the substitution effect of a price decrease, how to solve for the total effect of a price decrease, and how to solve for the income effect of a price decrease. So here's our utility function. First thing we'll do is get the marginal utility of good x. I'm going to use a quotient rule here. And doing that, we get y squared over x plus y squared. And then we're going to get the marginal utility of good y. Same thing, going to use the quotient rule here. And we get x squared over x plus y squared forming the utility maximizing condition where the marginal rate of substitution equals the ratio of the prices. We make our substitutions and we have the following. Rewriting that last condition and you'll notice here this x plus y squared and x plus y squared they'll cancel and you're left with y squared divided by x squared on the left hand side. Let's solve for y. So we're going to solve for y by taking the square root of both sides and multiplying through by x. And if we were to plug this equation into the budget constraint, we'd get the ordinary Marshallian demand for good x. And if we were to plug this equation into the utility function, we're going to get the compensated demand or Hicksian demand for good x. On the other hand, if we were to solve this equation, this above equation for x, and plug into the budget constraint would get the ordinary demand for good y and if we were to plug that equation into the utility function we would get the, we'd get the compensated demand for good y. So here's our budget constraint and we're going to take this equation up here and plug it into it where we have y. We're going to replace that now and we're going to solve this for x and that'll be our ordinary demand for good x. So just rewriting and now solving for x here the PY divided by PY to the one half just leaves us with PY to the one half power up here. We're going to factor out an X on the right hand side and then divide through by what's in parentheses. And that is our Marshallian and ordinary demand for good X. Let's set income equal to 30, the price of good X equal to 4, and the price of good Y equal to 1. So doing that this consumer will buy 5 units of good X. And if we're to take our earlier condition from our utility maximizing condition and plug in our values here for X and the prices, we'd see that the consumer would buy 10 units of good Y. So that is our utility maximizing consumption bundle. Let's calculate our utility at this utility maximizing consumption bundle. So taking our utility function and plugging in 5 for X and 10 for Y, we see that the consumer has utility of 10 divided by 3. Now let's get the compensated demand for good x. Once again, here's our utility function. Uh, we had this equation come out of the utility maximizing condition, and we're going to just make a substitution where we have y in the utility function. We're going to replace it by what we have over here. So doing that, and now simplifying, solving for x, we'll get the compensated demand for good x. So the first thing to note here is x times x, we got x squared, and then I just factored an x out of the denominator. And then this x squared divided by x just leaves us with x in the numerator, and you're left with this. Just rewriting that last condition, and now I'm going to just cross multiply what I have in the denominator. I'm going to multiply both sides through by it. And now this price of good x divided by price of good y all raised to the one half power. I'm just going to multiply both sides through by its reciprocal. And we get the following. And simplifying a little bit more by multiplying this py divided by px to the one half power through what's in parentheses, you're left with the compensated demand for good x. Let's evaluate the compensated demand for good X at our level of utility, which we said was 
10 thirds and at the prices price of good y is one price of good x is four and you'll notice here that the compensated demand for good x is five so at the original prices and income the compensated demand will equal the ordinary demand all right let's find the substitution effect of the price decrease in good x from four dollars to say one dollar to solve, we're going to use a compensated demand for good X with utility fixed at 10 thirds, and we're going to plug in the new price for good X, which is $1. So here's our compensated demand. We're holding utility or real income fixed at 10 thirds, and we're just adjusting the price ratio. So the price of good Y is still 1. The price of good X now is lower. It has fallen to 4, and we're going to solve this and we get x equals 20 divided by 3. So the substitution effect then is going to be this 20 divided by 3 minus 5, where we saw at the original prices and income, the consumer purchased 5 units of good x. So that difference then is 20 uh, divided by 3 minus 15 divided by 3, or 5 thirds. Uh, let's now find the total effect of the price decrease in good x from $4 to $1. To do that, let's evaluate the ordinary demand for good X at the new price, new lower price for good X. So here's our ordinary demand, and we're going to plug in 1 for the price of good X this time instead of 4. Doing that, we get 30 divided by 2, or 15. So at price of good X equals 4 and the price of good Y equals 1, the consumer bought 5 units. At the price of good X equals 1 and the price of good Y equals 1, the consumer now buys 15 units. So that difference then is the total effect of a price decrease or 10 units. So the consumer purchased 10 more units of good X following the price decrease. So what is the income effect of the price change or the price decrease? The total effect will equal the substitution effect plus the income effect. And if we just solve for the income effect, the income effect equals the total effect minus the substitution effect. And we know the total effect is 10 and the substitution effect is 5 thirds. So subtracting those two numbers, we get an income effect of 25 divided by 3. Okay, that's it. Hope you found this video helpful.